In this problem, we're going to find the arc length of the graph of this function from 1 to 6. So the formula for the arc length is lowercase s is equal to the definite integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus, and then it's the derivative squared, and then dx. So the goal here is to take the derivative of this, add 1 to it, and uh, try to basically work this out and write it in a convenient way so that we can actually integrate this. So before we take the derivative, let's maybe um, rewrite our function. So y is equal to, let's write this as 1 tenth x to the fifth. And then we can write the second piece as 1 sixth. And then you can bring this upstairs and it will make the exponent negative. This makes it easier to take the derivative. Okay, let's take the derivative now, so y prime. Using the power rule, we'll put the 5 in the front. So 5 tenths is going to give us 1 half. Subtracting 1 will give us x to the fourth. Bringing this down will give us negative 3 sixths. So which is negative 1 half. Subtracting 1 will give us x to the negative 4. So you can kind of already see um, like an interesting pattern starting to emerge. Again, you bring the 5 down, it gives us 5 tenths, which is 1 half. Subtracting 1 gives us 4, looks good. Bring this down, it gives us negative 3 sixths, which is negative 1 half. Subtracting 1 gives us negative 4. Okay, now we have to square it. So y prime squared is equal to, well, it's all of this squared. So 1 half x to the fourth minus 1 half x to the negative 4. And we are squaring this. So it might be beneficial to uh, first pull out the 1 half. So we could do this 1 half x to the fourth minus x to the negative 4. It just makes it easier to think about, at least for me it does. And this is all being squared. So this is the same as 1 fourth. And then we have x to the 4 minus x to the negative 4. I just have an easier time um, expanding this without the fractions. Um, so basically we square the 1 half and we get 1 fourth and then we square the other piece. Now there is a formula that we can use for this problem. If you have a minus b quantity squared, you basically square the first piece, so you square the a, you keep the sign, and then you multiply the a and the b and you double them, so 2ab, and then you square the last piece, so plus b squared. So the same thing applies here, this will be 1 fourth, so when we square the x to the fourth, what's going to happen is we'll have x to the fourth squared. And what you do is you just multiply the 2 and the 4. So that'll give you x to the 8th. So we have x to the 8th. And then minus 2. And then this times this. And when you multiply them, well, the exponents will cancel, right? You'll get x to the 4th times x to the negative 4. You add the exponents, so you get x to the 0, so you just get 1. So it's times 1. And then plus, squaring the last one, we get x to the negative 4 squared. So negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, so we get negative 8. Okay, so we're here. Again, it's x to the negative 4 squared, and so 2 times negative 4 is negative. I'm trying to show as much work... Uh, as I can, um, because, you know, these problems, oftentimes, if you look in a book, the, all these steps are, are skipped. Um, let's go ahead and distribute the 1 fourth. So this is equal to 1 fourth x to the eighth. Uh, 1 fourth times negative 2 is negative 1 half, and then plus 1 fourth x to the negative 8. So all of this is just y prime squared. We're almost there. Now we just have to add 1 to all of this, so let's carefully do that. So finally, we have 1 plus y prime squared is equal to 1 plus all of this. So 1 fourth x to the 8th minus 1 half 
plus one fourth x to the negative eight. And this is the this is the key step. Like something is going to happen here uh, in this problem that is like whoa. So you combine the one and the negative one half. That's going to give you one half. So you have one fourth x to the eighth plus one half, and then plus one fourth x to the negative eight. Okay. And I guess now we can pull out a one-fourth. So this is equal to one-fourth, just like we did at the beginning. So it'll be x to the eighth. So if you pull out a one-fourth from one-half, if you think about it, that's just two. You can check. One-fourth times two is one-half, so everything is okay. Plus x to the negative eight. And here is the key step. This is one-fourth. x to the fourth plus x to the negative 4. You might say, how did I know that? And the real answer is that I've done this problem before. I've, I've, I've seen it done. Uh, this problem is usually in books, and they always skip this step. And so you wonder, like, how do they magically <laughs> do everything? Well, this is how. Basically, if you work backwards, if you use the formula, if you use this formula here, a plus b squared, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. On this, it'll work. Check it out. If you square the x to the fourth, you get x to the eighth plus two, and then ab, so x to the fourth, x to the negative four, and then square the last one, so x to the negative eight. Look what happens here. Uh, you get x to the eighth plus two plus x to the negative eight. So it does check, right? It does check. Um, basically, uh, if you look back at where we started, I mean, we pretty much started with, with, with this. And all we did was change the sign. So it's kind of, it's kind of ridiculous, all of the work it took just to change the sign. So S, we're finding the arc length. That's what we're doing. <laughs> it's easy to forget what's going on in the problem. Uh, we're going from 1 to 6. So from 1 to 6. So 1 to 6. And then we have... Um, one fourth x to the fourth plus x to the negative four squared. Right, this is our our one plus y prime squared, and then we're taking the square root of this. Right, that, that was the formula. The formula was a to b square root one plus y prime squared dx. So we took our our one plus y prime squared, and then we take the square root. Okay, um, so now we uh, Take the square root of each piece. This is 1 to 6. The square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. When you take the square root of this, you do get an absolute value, but everything is positive, so the absolute value goes away. So you just do get x to the fourth plus x to the negative 4, right? The square root uh, gets rid of the 2. Uh, if you're not clear by what I mean by that, it is important, so let me emphasize. The square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. However, if x is positive, it's just x. So here that's what happened, right? x to the fourth plus x to the negative 4 is positive because x can only vary from 1 to 6, so it's not a big deal. However, it is a big deal in certain problems sometimes, so it's worth uh, mentioning for just like future learning. At this point, we can integrate everything, so let's do that. So this will be 1 half. I'll leave it on the outside. Then you integrate this, so you add 1 and divide, so x to the 5 over 5. Same thing here, you add 1 and divide, so plus x to the negative 3 over negative 3. And we're going from 1 to 6. Let's keep going. So this is equal to, uh, let's go ahead and distribute this. This will be 1 tenth x to the 5 minus, and then 2 times 3 is 6, so minus 1 sixth x to the negative 3. And we're going from 1 to 6. It might be beneficial um, to bring the to bring this downstairs, like the x to the negative three. However, I'm just going to use a calculator after I plug in all the numbers, just to make it a little bit easier. So this is one tenth plugging in six. We get six to the five minus one six, six to the negative three minus one tenth, and then one to the five is one, so I won't write it minus one sixth, and then one to the negative three is one, so so I won't write it. I guess we could keep going by hand a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and, and take the easy way out. 
and plug this into my calculator. So 6 to the 5th, 6 to the 5 divided by 10, uh, minus 1 over 6 to the 4. That's what this is, right? This is really uh, 1 over 6 to the 4 because you can do this. It's a 3. And then you can add the exponents, right? You can bring the 3 down and it becomes positive and add them. And then minus 1 tenth, and then plus 1 sixth. And I got 777, wow, what a crazy number, Point six 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 or 67. I don't know how many decimals the problem would want, so I'll just say uh, 666. Six, six. So that would be uh, the arc length of the graph. That's it.